Let's pray together. Father, as we listen to your word today, we know that you work in and through each and every one of us. And I pray that as we hear your word today, that you will encourage us and strengthen us with your word so that we can truly become the, the people that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you have been to a potluck? Yeah, everybody's been to a potluck. I want to tell you a story about three different potlucks. Um, kind of silly and simple, but it's okay. The first one was a potluck, and one person brought a can of green jello, and nobody else brought anything else. How do you think it went? Not very well. People weren't very happy. So they complained about it, and they said, we've got, you know what? We had green jello, and that's all we had. We can't have that this next time. Everybody needs to bring something. So next time they had a potluck, and everybody brought red jello. And everybody brought it. So there was lots of jello, but how do you think the potluck went? Now, unless you really like to live on jello, it wasn't much of a potluck, right? Well, the third time they had a potluck, what did they do? They had a regular potluck, and everybody went home, and they brought what they could. Some people that were good cooks brought good things. Some people that were not such good cooks brought other stuff. But everybody brought what they could bring, and everybody came together and ate together. And how do you think that potluck went? Yeah, that's the way it is. You know, it's really simple, and it's a really silly kind of a uh, uh, picture. But that's the picture of the church, right? When we come, we come and we bring something to the table. We bring something uh, when we come to, to God and as we work together as God's people, as we each bring our own individual gifts, those things that, uh, that God has, has given to us, that's why they're called gifts. They're given to us. And as they're given to us, then we use those for the common good. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But let's look at this verse. Read with me. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. So we have gifts of the Spirit. And he, he, Paul, when he's talking to his, the people, says, I, I want you to understand about these gifts. But before we talk about them, we really have to understand what are spiritual gifts. What are they? Um, well, I like this definition. Read with me. Spiritual gifts are the various ways in which our one God expresses himself through his diverse family of believers for the good of all. So did you hear that? That's the way that God expresses himself through us. So as each of you exercises the gifts that God has given you, as God has prepared you to serve in his kingdom, as you do that, then God is expressing himself for the common good of all. And so each person, as they receive those gifts, maybe has a different gift, kind of like the potluck, right? Um, so maybe somebody brings meatballs and somebody brings green jello and somebody brings a casserole and somebody brings a dessert. Everybody's bringing something different to the table, but together it makes this incredible meal for everybody to eat. And it's the same thing as we come here. Maybe one of you has this gift and one of you has that gift. And we'll talk more about what those, some of those gifts are. But as you bring them, that's the way that God works to build up the body of Christ and to be a blessing. See, there's all kinds of things. There's 21 different gifts listed in the Scripture, but I don't think that's meant to be an exhaustive list. It's not meant to say, oh, these are only the gifts. They're just examples, because in some places it talks about some of the more miraculous type gifts, and some of them are more mundane or ordinary gifts, like uh, the gift, I always thought it was kind of, kind of interesting, because you talk about the gift of tongues, which is, is like a uh, special miraculous ability to speak a different language, and then you talk about the gift of administration, which is like the ability to balance the books and to do some of I mean, they're, they're very different in those ways. But the fact is God expresses himself through his people in a, a variety of different ways and lots of different gifts. Now, in Corinth, that's where, where Paul wrote this letter to with the people of Corinth. They were having a problem because some of the people that had the more exciting gifts, they were kind of looking, saying, you know, hey, this is pretty cool. I, I'm you know, I, I've got this amazing gift that God allows me to, to do miracles. And they were thinking of themselves as a lot more impressive than the people that could just kind of listen to people and encourage people. And so he says this. Oh, I got ahead of myself. I'm sorry. I don't know how I did that. But anyway, so because Paul first says something different. Let's read this verse. You know 
that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. It's kind of an odd verse to kind of pop in there. But what he's doing here is he's saying, look, before, you know, you used to worship these idols, and those idols really couldn't do anything in your life. They were mute. They weren't able to talk. They weren't able to do anything to make a difference in your life. I always think of uh, AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. You're familiar with that? It's a wonderful thing. Uh, A lot of people have become sober through the process of of AA, and there's some wonderful things about it. But one thing that I have a little bit of trouble with is that they will say, your higher power can be anything. You know, your higher power, and the big one that people often talk about is it, it can be a doorknob, right? Well, doorknobs are pretty good if you want to open a door, but they really can't help you in your life. Um, they're, they're mute. You know, it, it, maybe it's a nice mental construct so you think of something outside yourself. But what Paul's saying is what you used to believe were things like doorknobs. And that doorknob really does, can't do anything in your life. What really can do something in your life is the Holy Spirit. Read with me. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He says, look, you know, the Holy Spirit is what gives you the power to be able to believe in Jesus. You know, and and if you have that Holy Spirit, you're going to recognize Jesus is Lord. He's the one who came into this world, lived for you, died for you, rose again. And that very faith that you have in those facts, that very faith that you have in Jesus, that's a gift of God. Luther says it this way. I believe, say it with me, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gift, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Yeah, this is, a, this is, is like the ultimate in spiritual gifts. And this is the one that all of us have, even though it looks different in each one of us. It's the gift of faith. You can't come to Jesus. You can't like... All right, I decided I'm going to become a Christian today. I'm going to be a Christian. I'm going to do it all on my own strength. You can't. It's a spiritual thing. It's something that God has done for you. He is, you hear the gospel. His Holy Spirit is working in your heart and calls you to believe in Him. And that's a spiritual gift. And so Paul is saying, it's not like it was with those dumb, mute idols that couldn't do anything for you. Right now, you have a God that actually works in your life. And you can tell because you have faith in Jesus and you can call Him Lord. If you can call Him Lord, you know that that Spirit is working in you. And so that is the the foundational spiritual gift for every believer is the gift of faith. That's that's the foundational gift. That's where all the other gifts spring out of. The Holy Spirit working in your life that now you believe in Jesus. That's where it all starts. Some people will say, well, you know, how do I know if the Holy Spirit's active in my life? Well, if you can say, I believe in Jesus Christ. If you, can, if you can say that, not just say the words, but believe that in your heart, then you know the Holy Spirit is working because you couldn't believe that if it wasn't the Holy Spirit's work in your heart. So you know that Holy Spirit is working. But that's not the only gift of faith. So read with me. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone. It is the same God at work. And here's where we get to that Corinthian problem. Because the Corinthians were going, yeah, my gift's good and I'm better. And these people were saying, well, you know what? You know, that my gift, it's not very valuable. Paul says, wait a minute. Whether it's something really special or whether it's something not, they all come from the same Lord. It's kind of like that potluck we were talking about. Right? Somebody comes to the potluck and they've made these, these gourmet meatballs and they're pretty proud of them. Oh, look at these. And they're, they're hit. Everybody just is, 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 is killing for them because they're, they're wonderful. All right? And somebody else, you know, they're having a rough time and they run over to KFC and find some chicken that my son-in-law made, right? And they bring it and throw the bucket on the table. And Paul says, let's not say one's better than the other. Each person is bringing what they can bring and the Lord is working in and through that. So maybe your gift is something real spectacular. Maybe you're able to preach or read or, or do something in an amazing way. And people, people go, wow, that was really inspiring. 
And maybe somebody else has the gift of being able to just to have that little gift of service to be able to say, hey, I saw there was a mess in the bathroom and I was uh, the Lord moved me to clean that up without telling anybody about it at all. But those gifts are all gifts that God gives for the good of His church. And it's not like one is way up here or one is down there, but it's the same God that gives those gifts. And each person's service should be valued as, as a, a gift from God. And here's another thing. I've, not from this particular scripture, but it is scriptural. Um, there's times in our life where we're able to give more than others. There's seasons in our life. And so it's really important for us as God's people not to look down on people that are maybe at a different point. Maybe if you're going through a real struggle in your life, maybe something's just really hard and getting out of bed is just, just, just all you can do. Okay, well, that's where you're at right now. And maybe somebody else has lots of time and energy and they're able to come and, and give and be at church and do lots of things. And that's where they're at right now. And both of those people are serving the Lord in the way that they can. And so it's not for us to judge, but to instead to just love people where they're at. Because maybe this week, this person's way, way down and really struggling, and you're doing really well. But maybe next week it'll be vice versa. And so we as God's people, we love one another and recognize that whatever service you can give, it all comes from the Lord. Read with me. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. It says to each one. So here's one thing, though. Even though it may be different at different seasons in your life, God gives His spiritual gifts. He works through each and every person. Each and every person is able to give and be a part of the body of Christ. And we need that for the common good. I I love the story of Horton Hears of Who. I know he's been uh, um, canceled or whatever, Dr. Seuss. But when I was growing up, Dr. Seuss was like my guy. This was not my favorite. Green eggs and ham was my favorite. I had it memorized, okay? But, but Horton Hears a Who was up there. Um, you know, I, if, if I ran the zoo, I really, you guys don't need to know my Dr. Seuss favorites. But, but Horton Hears a Who, you know the story. There's this elephant, and this elephant finds this little fuzzball, and because he's got such big ears, he can hear that there's people living, little tiny people that don't seem to matter on that fuzzball. And he can hear him plain as day because he's got these big, huge elephant ears, but everybody else can't hear him. And they think Horton's crazy and they're going to kill him and they're going to boil the fuzzball. And so Horton's trying to save them and he says, look, you guys got to let people know you're there. And everybody starts yelling and, and this little fuzzball, all the little tiny people on there, and they're yelling and they're playing their instruments and they're, they're beating their drums and they're doing everything and still nobody can hear him, although Horton can hear him really well. And then there's the mayor of the little town down on the fuzzball runs around and he finds one little kid that isn't making a sound. And he he goes to the kid and he says, hey, look, we need you right now. And the little kid says, yop. And all of a sudden the yop breaks through and everybody can hear. But what I love about the story is it's just like the church. God gives his gifts to each and every person to be able to use for the benefit of the church. But if you've got some people that are just saying, nah, you know what, somebody else will do it. Nah, you know what. We need every person working together to be a blessing for the common good of all. God works through each believer in unique and yet indispensable ways. Now you might say, I I don't have anything that I can do. But that's not true because God has promised that he gives to each person the ability to serve. And what you do now might be different than what you did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And what you do in 10, 20, 30 years might be different too. But God has called you to use your gifts for the common good. They're the manifestation of the Spirit. Now that's a kind of a a big term, manifestation. What does it mean to manifest something? To what? To make it obvious, yeah, it comes from, in the Greek, it comes from the word of, of shining light, you know, so it's, it's like to turn it on and let it shine, to make the Spirit obvious, to reveal the Spirit so that everybody can see the Spirit, and that's exactly what happens as we exercise our gift, and maybe your gift is a gift of listening, as you exercise that gift, you're letting the world see the Holy Spirit at work. See, the Holy Spirit, you can't see it. I mean, it, it, when it came down like tongues of uh, fire, it was manifested on, on the apostles. But now you, you just can't see it. You don't walk by and go, oh, there's the Holy Spirit. 
But you can when God's people are exercising those gifts, when we're listening or when maybe we're serving in some way. You use the gift of serving like those folks are doing a, a project. Or when, when you're giving, you know, when you're showing the generosity that God's given you. You know, the, the, the church can't function unless we are sharing out of the bounty that God has given us. And that generosity that He works in our hearts that we're able to give back to Him, I mean, that's, that's a spiritual gift. And if you're sitting there going, ah, well, I don't really feel like, you know, well, then the, the church as a whole is suffering. And then, or maybe it's that gift of prayer. Some of you are, are gifted at praying for other people and you're willing to take your time and listen to people and find out what they need and then you pray for them. That's a spiritual gift. Now, all of these things are things that every Christian does, but some people just have a, 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 a special extra working of the Holy Spirit that allows them to use those gifts in those ways. Or maybe it's teaching children or adults. And maybe it's something not on the list at all. But God has gifted each one of us so that His Spirit is obvious. His Spirit is revealed. Christians make God's Spirit visible by exercising our spiritual gifts for the common good. Christians make God's Spirit visible. So when people look at the church... And when the church is selfish and not doing its things, they don't see Jesus there at all. They don't see His Spirit. But when the Spirit is truly exercising those gifts and loving people and using those gifts for the glory of God, people go, wow, there's something happening there. There's something going on in that church. They're using their gifts for the glory of God. Now, I want to close with a little, uh, I don't know if it's a story, but uh, a little thing about zebras and wildebeest. Now, they say this didn't happen until the 1960s, and I'm not sure how they know, but they say in old days, zebras and wildebeest would travel alone. But now they travel together. And they travel together for a very good reason, because zebras, they can see really, really well. And wildebeest, they can smell and hear really, really well. So when they're together, the zebras are able to spot those lions when they're coming along real quickly and easily. And the wildebeest, they're able to sniff out the water holes and those kinds of things that they need and hear if there's something that's not going right. And so they use the gifts of each of them so that as they migrate together, they do a better job than if they were by themselves. And that's why God has put us together. You know, some of us might be zebras, some of us might be wildebeest, but we work together for the common good so that we can do what? Carry out the mission of Jesus. And the mission of Jesus is what? I hope we know. Yeah, to love people in the name of Jesus, that they might know the gospel, know that Jesus died for them and rose again. You know, that's what the church is about. And so as we each exercise our gifts, more and more people are going to know of that wonderful love that Jesus has for them. Amen. Okay. Any thoughts or comments before we review? Okay, Uh, let's review. What have we learned? Spiritual gifts are the various ways in which our one God expresses himself through his diverse family of believers for the good of all. The foundational spiritual gift for every believer is the gift of faith. God works through each believer in and yet indispensable ways. Christians make God's Spirit visible by exercising our spiritual gifts for the common good. Okay. Now take a minute. Think about what you've heard and what's going to be different in your life now that you've heard this message. How is God going to use His Word in your life? Yeah, okay. So, Betty, we need to use the spiritual gifts that God's given us to love and help others. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So use our gifts, no matter how small it might seem to us, it's a big deal to God to use those gifts, step out in faith and use them. And it's true. We need we need everyone to use their gifts. We need... Kaylee and your boys 
and we need Orva, and we need Ruth that's not able to join with us because she's in a retirement place. We need all of God's people to use their gifts for the common good. And maybe, you know, at some point in your life, you know, you're, you're not able to do a lot else. Maybe God calls you to prayer. Maybe that's what you can do is you, you can't do a whole lot of other things because of your health or other things, but you can pray and you can pray for the good of the, for the, good of the church, right? Okay. And that's something we can do right now. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for giving us your various gifts in so many different ways in which we can love and serve each other. Um, Thank you for those diverse gifts. And as we bring them to the table, as we bring them uh, to our our church like a potluck, uh, you use them to make your spirit visible for the world. Let this word live in our hearts and our minds so that we truly become the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.